Today, Mirz Hashem, page 107, we're going to complete the Hilchot uh, Tzeida, the law of trapping. Um, as we said, not every animal is subject to the uh, biblically based uh, prohibition of trapping, so that one is not liable for uh, capturing animals that are not a uh, uh, consumerly trapped by a hunter or, or is no practical use. Um, we um, learn and continue to complete that uh, learning in regard to uh, trapping performance with uh, cooperation uh, by uh, two people, two individuals, so it's the idea of uh, liability or not liability in a certain uh, situation of trapping. And then we're going to the um, in to chapter 14, it's called Shmona Shatzim, and that uh, uh, chapter is dealing with a um, uh, continuation of the uh, idea of trapping, but it's a, um, in a different um, um, explanation, the two a mindset of trapping or a chovel, if someone does all kind of um, a, a damage. And again, that, that uh, chapter it's called Shmona uh, Shratzim, and uh, first it's dealing with uh, eight uh, creeping animals mentioned in the uh, Torah, who uh, one who trap them with a wound, um, um, etc. Um, because the Torah divided between those animals and other animals, so we're going to learn all these halachot in the flinty and wound, uh, when it's considering a primary uh, uh, category of labor and when it's not. Page 107, top of the page. Amar Rabbi Abba, Amar Rav Chia Barashi, Amar Rav, Nichnesa lo tzipor tachat knafav, Yoshevu meshamro ad shetech shach. If a bear flew under the laps of one clothing. So, in those days, people wearing a big robe, but can happen any time to anyone. So, here's the question. We discussed yesterday and day before yesterday the idea of trapping animals. Here, the question is, is that considering a trapping animal? Is that considering a some type of mukze, um, which is um, something that it's um, designated on Shabbat and you cannot move it? So he said, the Gemara said, Yoshevu Meshamro Ad He can um, uh, watch, he may sit and secure until the dark. So it traces a scenario. It's a Shabbat, it's Saturday afternoon, and a bird flew in, you're sitting, you're uh, resting, you're reading a book, boom, the bird is, is there. So is now you hide the bird there until the sun set, and then you can, whatever you want to do, you, want, you can put it in a cage, you can have it, etc. Now, um, as far as the tzeida, trapping, the ran and the ritva, the rash batu, they said that it's not an issue. The bird initiated that. He or she came <laughs> under your uh, jacket or, or robe, and it's not an issue of trapping. So what do you think? What's the issue here? No. So the Ran and the Ritva and the Rashba say the problem is Mukze, which means that it's designated, um, uh, it's like Mukze, so you cannot carry um, the bird because um, it's under that category. Um, there is another school of thought um, that maybe if you allow that, it will lead, it's like a boundary for people that lechatchila go ahead and capture animal, do some type of trapping because they see that that's allowed. Um, there are those who say that it's look, it's have the the appearance of trapping. 
So again, there's a several school of thought. The most traditional school of thought is the idea that it's, it's mukze. But again, according to halacha, if you just, um, if a bird flew underneath the flap of one's clothing on Shabbat, so he, he's permitted to guard it until uh, after Shabbat, and that's uh, the Ramba Milchot Shabbat chapter 10 said. Mativ Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak Yashav HaRishon Al HaPetach Humila You remember we have a discussion yesterday so that if a, if a first person was sat in a doorway and feel and then Uva Shenivi Yashav Betzido and the second person came and sat next to him Af Al Pi Shamad HaRishon Ve'alach Lo HaRishon Chayav HaShini Patu even if the first person stood and went. So, <laughs> uh, what do you think? Uh, so the, so the, the first person liable and the second person exempt. Even the, the first person stood and went. So, so they said, My love, Patu Avalasu. So that on Shabbat Alachot is Patu Avalasu, which means. He is exempt from if it was mezid intentional mita. If it's a, a, a shogeg unintentional, it's a yesin offering. But the rabbanan, the the, uh, the sages forbids it. There's a lot of things in Ilchot Shabbat. Usually, when they use the term exempt, it means that he's exempt from punishment because it's not a, a biblical prohibition, but it's forbidden by the sages. So the Gemara said, if that's the case, uh, we can juxtapose the two. Why? Because we said, when the deer get in that spot, and you have that the, the person in the doorway, so, um, um, and you said that it's an issue, and he's liable, the one who's standing in the doorway, so the deer cannot escape, and here you tell me that when the bird came in, you can capture it under your garment. So the Gemara said, look, it, it doesn't mean uh, 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 exempt, uh, but it's forbidden by the rabbi. No, patu mutar. It's exempt and it's permissible, even by the rabbis. So they said, hachei name mistabra. Midiktane Seifa, the same we can understand from the second clause of the Mishnah. Le maze dome. What it's uh, compared to? What is a, uh, to what is this second person action similar? Le noelet beito le shomro. To one who locks his house to secure it. Venimtzat zvi shamu betocho. And it turns out a deer that was trapped before Shabbat is also secure inside it. Michlal, by that, by interference, what we understand, the fatur umutar, he is exempt and it's permitted. So it means that when you lock a house that they have an animals there, Everyone, you know, get used to do it, just like one who locks the door into his house. Shma mina. So the Gemara said, yes, that's the way you learn it. So no, in general, in the term of Gemara, when they say Shma mina, it means that's final conclusion. Here not, but usually if they say twice, that's for sure, that's the final conclusion. Ika de Amri, there are those who have a, a little different um, version. Amar Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak, in regard to what we said earlier of a bird that came in and and um, get under one's clothing. Afanan nametanina that the person can can safeguard that that bird. Afal pisha mada rishon vealachlo. So what we said that if the first person stand in a in a hallway hallway and the second person came and sat next to him and then the first person left harishon chayava sheni patu the first person is liable and the second person is exempt my love patu umutar 
you may think that he is exempt and a just is permitted not only in a sense of biblical but also is permissible by, by the sages he said no but to it's a, like a typical a situation of Ilchot Shabbat that is exempt from the Torah law, but it's forbidden by Rabbinic law. It means that here we don't have a proof to word of Rav that you're allowed to do it Lechatchila. So what we learn in a second clause in the part of the Mishnah, it what it looks like it to one who lacks his house to secure it, and it turned out a deer that was trapped before Shabbat is also secure inside it. So what we said. Michlal de Patu Umutar Shmamina. So we derive from that that he is exempt and it is permitted. La, the same as one who locks the door on his, to his house. So that's what, basically what we learned. And we explained yesterday that in people who live in a far land, farmland or uh, people who live in uh, those uh, uh, um, open houses, villages that you have, for example, a lot of chicken and hen running around. So it's very common that they come in your property, in your house, and run around. So the minute you close the door, or you lock the door, you are not basically locking those animals in your house. Because it's very common for them to be in and out, right? The idach, now since we talk about patu umuta, which means it's exempt by the Torah, and it's permissible also by rabbinic law, it's a Mishnah in Tractate Adayot, page 2. Hamefis Musa Beshabbat. If someone take a, some type of uh, Musa, it's like you have on your body a part that it's a, uh, a field of um, 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 some wound, okay? And it's filled it up. Now what do you do? you basically um, um, take a little needle and push, push in, right? And it's, um, it's open it. So, im la sotlape, if his intent to make, quote-unquote, a mouth in that wound, which means in order for that wound to be open all the time, so all the inside will come out and the air will come in so if you do that then um, they say that Chayab um, what is he liable? because he made an entrance and it's called part of Melechet Bone building there is another version that said that it's because that he is a tikkun kli, that you have some vessels and you repair that vessel. Um, uh, Rashi said that the proof for that is that when uh, God created um, um, man and then Adam and Eve, they said vayiven et tzela, that uh, God uh, uh, put together that uh, pieces from Adam. So, um, but if you dip in in the Rashi, especially Rashi in Ktubot, page 6, Dibu Amatchilim La'asot, you see that um, there is a, a notion of Tikkun Kli, um, because in a sense it's the same as Makeb Bapatish. You remember we talk about it like someone who completed work? So, uh, the Rambam hold that it's really Makebe Patish, in Ilchot Shabbat. But anyway, um, um, Im Leotzi Mimena Lecha, if he's intent to just to pull out the, um, the, um, the part that it's a, like to soften in a sense. So, and 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 uh, he's not concerned about um, that close again. Patu, 
So it's exempt, it's not considering a repairing a vessel. Uh, that's what Rashi said. So it means that according to um, Rashi and Tosfot, it's even Lechatchila. Um, why? Because they said at the place of sorrow, the sages did not put a decree. That's also uh, Tosfot said here. Umimaida patu umutar. So how do you know that he is not only exempt by biblical law, but it's also permissible in a rabbinic manner? That's the Tnan, we are going to study in 122, in the page 122, in Shabbat you're allowed to carry machat shel yad, which is the small needle that usually you sew a clothing with that. Litol ba'etakots, to pull out the the little throne that sometimes uh, get in the body. In those days, most probably they don't have um, what is called tweezers. 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 Thank you. Veidach. Now we'll go to the third place that patu umutar that is exempt and is permissible. They said hatzad nachash beshabbat. So the Meiri said. That's applied that one who trap a snake, that it's not a dangerous snake. Um, in other words, for example, he can run away or find a way to 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 escape from that snake. But he he, he uh, or it's a snake that uh, in a category that it's not going to harm, it's not going to cause a person uh, any type of damage. If he's involved, he occupied with that snake, in order to make sure that that snake will not bite him, so he is exempt because he's under the category of type of work that you don't need it for the purpose of its own need. Okay? Im lirfua, chayav. However, if he needs it for some type of refuah, so there are those who say that um, refuah can be, um, they use sometimes um, some part of the snake for the purpose of healing. But anyway, um, um, so chayav, so he's liable. How do you know um, that it's exempt and in allow? So they said, did none. We learn in page 121. They allow to take a, a, a ball and overturn it on the top of a lamb, even Lechatchila on Shabbat, so that the fire will not take hold in the ceiling beam. So, um, the Mishnah Brewer explained in um, um, 2.77 in uh, following the Rambam, Ilchot Shabbat, chapter 12, that um, if this ball is made out of iron is an issue because it may warm up and it's like mavir, it's like burning. But the only time we allow that if there is a chance that it's harm people's life, which means in a way he's saving life, then you allow it. So in a sense, when you talk about capturing a snake, uh, we don't concern about the snake sorrow, we concern about what? We concern about the people, the persons. So they said the same, ve'al tzu'a shel katan ve'al akrav shelo tishoch. The same apply on the top of a child's feces, so that he will not touch the dirt and dirty himself, and at the top of a snake or scorpion, so it will not bite. So, uh, so it means that even uh, you said that uh, 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 biting from a, a scorpion, it's much serious than the snake. Uh, the Gemara said in Brachot 33 that that's much serious, but um, in that sense, in any type of something that causes sorrow by biting of those animals, the sages not put a decree. So, Adran alach haoreg, ve'adrach alan, ve'atan alach haoreg, ve'atach alan, 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 ve'atach alan
Minano be'alma adin ve'lo be'alma de'ati. The next parak begin with a statement. Shmonash ratzim ha'amurim ba'Torah ha'tzad ve'achovel ba'em chayav. So since we have a previous discussion over trapping animals, now the Mishnah contrasts uh, this type of melachot with a bruising animal. So the Torah speaks about eight type of creeping animals. A, um, it's a low-lying animals. Uh, that, that's a, um, the Torah said in, in a category of eight type of animal. Um, they said in Leviticus 11, Basheretz Ashoretz al for all these are, for you, the um, contaminate one among the creeping animals, Shratzim, and there is a list. The Choled, um, um, it's a, like whistle in the old French, Achbar, Achbar, it's mean mouth, Hatzav, Tzav can be a few things, but uh, in the simple way, Tzav, usually it's a, a turtle. There's, there are those who say that Tzav, um, um, uh, fear it, fear it. Um, but uh, it's a uh, uh, Daryl Bag said that it's a lizard. And then we have Anaka. So Anaka, it's a, a hurricane, uh, which is a uh, um, hedgehog. It's a few version what is a Anaka, but that's most of the um, Mephoshim said that it can be a beaver, a koach. It's again a certain species of lizard. Leta'a, it's a lace, lace, lace red. Um, um, it's a um, comment, you see leta'ot in Israel. Chomet, chomet it's a limus, or the, this Gemara in Chagiga that said that it's a, something that growing inside a shell, that it's like a snail. And the tinshamet, Rashi call it talpa, um, but uh, uh, the Rabbeinu Saadia said that it's some type of lizard. So in all this uh, list, the Mishnah said, this Shmona Shratzim Amurim Torah, the eight Shratzim, the eight type of creeping animal mentioned in Torah, Hatzad Dan Ve'achovel Ba'em, one who trapped and one who bruises them, on Shabbat is liable. Ushar shkatsim veramasim, but other vermin and crawling things, hachovel bahen patu. One who bruises them is exempt. Hatzadan letzore chayav. One who traps them for a positive purpose he is liable. Shelo letzore patu. And one who traps them not for a positive purpose is exempt. Chayav va'of shebir shuto, beasts and birds that are under one's control, hatzadan patu, one who traps them is exempt, ve'achovel bahem chayav, and one who bruises them is liable. So you see here a general category of the Mishnah when they use the word hatzadan. If someone needs them for the purpose of uh, healing, he is liable. So the, the, Gemara, the Gemara said that usually those type of creating animals are not create any damage. It's, they are uh, a peaceful animal. So persons need them for what? For example, he needs it for some type of medicine. That's what the Ran said. So that's the reason why he is liable. But chayav of shebershuto, but someone who has this type of um, uh, animals or birds that is in possessions, so even that he hold in his hand, so um, uh, you may think that Tosfot uh, uh, said that it means that he's exempt, but it's not permissible. Because um, uh, you may say that, like we said always, that he's uh, exempt from the Torah, but he is liable from the rabbinic. But the, the Shulchan Aruch Shinta Tzayin 316 said that even by the rabbinic law, it's permissible.
אז בגמורה said מדקטני החובל בהם חייב because we said that, um, um, that the tot in the Mishnah one wound them is liable so what we understand נכלל דאית לאו או so you see that they have a skin covering the flesh and the blood pool beneath them man tana who is the one who said that the, all these eight shratzim uh, the, the skin is this uh, rule of his uh, skin amar shmur rabbi yochan benuri that none we learn in chulin page 122. Rabbi Yochan Ben-Uri says, Shmona Shratzim yesh lahem morot. He said the head-creeping animals, they, they listed in the Torah, they have skins. So soon you see that there are certain animals that are not considering having skins. Rabbi Baravun Amar, Afilu Tema Rabbanan, Atkan Lopig Rabbanan Lerod Rabbi Yochan Ben-Uri, Ela Liyan Tum'a. He said that the only um, a a disputation between them is in regards to a matter of impurity. How do you know? Because he said, Dichtiv, it's written in Leviticus 11, Ele hatmeim lachem, those are for you the impure among the creeping animals. Whoever touches them, when they are dead, shall become impure until evening. So he said, לרבות שאורותיהן כבשרה, to include the fact that the skins of the creatures in the second verse transmitted impurity, אבל לעניין שבת אפילו רבנן מודו. But in regard to הלכות שבת, even the rabbis conclude, concede that the skin is distinct from the flesh. So the Gemara asks, So regarding Shabbat, they not agree. If someone trap one of the eight creeping animals, mention it one, one wound them is liable. So Divra Yochan Benuri, which means that they have the din, they have the halacha of skin. And that's the word of Rabbi Yochan Benuri. Uh, וחכמים אומרים, and the sages said, אין אור אלא, the term skin is utilized only למה שמנו חכמים, to all this list that the Gemara enumerated in the tracted chulin, the, all the list we mentioned earlier. אדרבה, the truth is, the opposite is true, למה שמנו חכמים אין להם אור. to that list that the sages put, it doesn't have a skin. אמר אביי החקה אמר, אין אור חלוק מבשר אלא מה שאומרנו מנו חכמים. The difference between the skin and the real flesh is only the least that the sages enumerated. אמר לרב, הרב עשה את אביי, הלא מה שאומרנו חכמים כאמר. So that's, that's what we said earlier, so that's the, the, he cannot, the Tana cannot miss uh, um, uh, leading by saying that there is a difference between what they enumerate or not enumerate. Amarav Ahi Kamar, Ein O Metameke Basar, the skin will not make it impure, the same as a, a regular a, a flesh, Ela Lema Sheikh Manu Chachamim, only the, the least that the, those sages uh, enumerated, having skin discreet from the flesh. Michlal, Rabbi Yochan Ben Uri, Anachnamei, the lo manu chachamim metamim. So what we understand that the Rebbe Chanuk Rebbe Chanuk Ben Uri hold that even the creeping animals not enumerated by the sages also transmit impurity, and that's basically um, the 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 way we learn. It was the opposite. Vehan the ketane we learn in that Mishnah Rebbe Chanuk Ben Uri Omer Shmona Shratzim Yesh Leim Olrod VeLo Metamim. He said that eight creeping animals. Has a skin and they not make it impure. Amar Avad Amar Matna Tarit Zacher. Avad Amar said that they resolve in this manner. Vachachamim Omrim and the sages said in response to Rabbi Yochan Ben Uri, Leinian Tumah and Or LeMashem Manu Chachamim. In regard to the uh, state of impurity, those animals enumerated by the sages do not have a skin. So it means. Um, the, the machlok, the disputation between the sages and Rabbi Yochan ben Uri is only in regard to law of impurity. So, so you still tell me that in regard to Shabbat they didn't 
דיספיוט, והתניא, הצד אחד משמונה שרצים אמורים בתורה, if someone capture one of the eight creeping animal that the Torah mentioned, החובל בהם חייב one who damaged them is liable, but if he created a damage, בשרצים שיש להם אורות, it one of the four creeping animals that carry his skin, which means not those who mention in the Mishnah in Chulim, because The, the, the limitation in those, it's um, for certain purposes. For example, that you want to make sure they don't cre- carry any damage. So, so it's considering melacha shena tzrikha legufa. You don't need just to kill them. You want to make sure that they don't carry damage. So, uh, so the Ruhalacha said in Shin Tetzayin in 316 that basically a person is exempt if he does that. Ve'ezo yi chabura shena chuzere. So give me an example that considering an irreversible wound, Nitzrar Adam, Vafal Pishelo Yatsa, where the, the blood collects in a single spot beneath the skin, even if it does not emerge. Rabbi Yochan ben Uri Omer, Shmona Shratzim, Yesh Lahem Orot, Rabbi Yochan ben Uri says that eight creeping animals have skins. So apparently there is a disagreement with regard to Shabbat as well. And every, anyone who calls a, a, a wound, he is liable. Omar Ravashi, Ravashi said, Tana, Man Tana Kama, who is the first Tana in the Brayta? Rabbi Yudha, the Azil Batal Gishta. We go by Rabbi Yudha, he, he holds that you go by the, um, uh, only by the, um, the, the, the you touching, touching your uh, hand. So that can make the, the impurity. The Tnan Rabbi Yudah Omer Aletaa Kechulda. Rabbi Yudah said that the lizard mentioned the verse is the same as the whistle because the whistle has skin discreet from its flesh. And he said, Aval Rabbanan de Pligeled Rabbi Yochanan Le'inyan Tuma But the sages that disagree with Rabbi Yochanan in regard to law of impurity in Yan Shabbat Module, again, we need to separate between the two things. One is the law of impurity and one is the law of Shabbat. If that's the case, it's the same as Rabbi Yochan ben Uri. So the truth is, you should say, which means that you're speaking about Rabbi Yochan ben Uri and those who disagree with him. That's basically you said that Rabbi Yochan ben Uri and those who disagree with him. So what we said in that uh, principle, that someone who uh, creates a wound on Shabbat is liable only for the wound that it cannot be uh, repaired, which means that it's a wound that uh, holds that state. So, For where we learn from any pasuk, for any text, that some type of a wound that defines something irreversible which means that all the uh, blood that connect, that capture in that uh, skin part uh, or it's collected in that soft skin, it's not considering a, a wound uh, that uh, you're liable on Shabbat. That's what the Rashash said. So he said the source is the Dikhti, because it's written in the book of Jeremiah, Hayafoch kushi orov and amel chavar burotav. Hashem created each person differently. So it's not possible that a Kushite, Kushite is those that have a very heavy, dark skin. So they cannot uh, uh, leopard its spot, which means that they cannot change around the way that God created them. So the same applied to a, a, a leopard. Leopard. Can, leopard. I'm sorry, leopard. Yep. Yep. Cannot change the, uh, its spot. So my chavu burotav. What exactly the uh, the chavu burotav mean? Ileima de karik mei rik mei. If you tell me that that's applied to real leopard uh, skin, hai ben amer chavu burotav. The mer gvanav mi baile. So we shouldn't use the word chavu burotav. We should use the word the different uh, spot marks on the skin. Ela. Kakushi, so you have to say that that's applied to Kushai. Ma or the Kushi ena chozeret, af chabura ena chozeret. The same, just as like skin of Kushai, it's not changed. The, the color to different color, like white, the wound does not reverse. It's like famous saying 
you take a cucumber and you make it a, a cucumber um, with a salt or with a, a vinegar. So now it's a different cucumber. It's pickles, right? Or mm -hmm. whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you can take a cucumber and you can turn it to pickle. But you cannot take a pickle and turn it back into a cucumber. Turn back to a cucumber. So they have a certain category that's unchangeable. Ushar Shkatsim, so they continue in the Mishnah that it said all the other traps, um, um, so excluding these eight creeping animals, anyone who caused the wound, he is exempt. So ha hogan chayav. But if someone uh, killed them, he's liable. Mantana. Who is the one who said it? Amar Abir mi Arab Eliezeri. Said of Rabbi Eliezer. Tani Rabbi Eliezer omer aorer kina b'Shabbat keorer gamal b'Shabbat. Rabbi Eliezer said that one who kills a lice on Shabbat is the same as killing a camel. I don't know if you remember, but on page 12, we learned it was a Rashi that said the word kiloma. So we learned there that um, there is a uh, certain um, um, situation that people should conceptualize that when you're killing the size of those animals is no difference so even the lice is the same din as camel Rashi said over there klomar de gadol meod in the sense that it's uh, the, the size makes no difference so matkif la rav yosef ad kan lo pligi rabana le rab eliezer ela bekina de napara ve rava so um the uh, Meshe Chochma explain on the Bereshit, chapter, 10, uh, chapter 9, Pasuk 9, he said that there is a two type of lice. There is a lice in the ancient time, in our times, it can um, be fruitful and multiply in a sense that they have eggs, but it's all come from the human body, and, and those eggs um, um, come out of the uh, skin, hair skin, etc. Mm. But it's come inside the person's body. Aval shar katzim de shkatzim v'rafim 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 but add other type that can be a, 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 a procreate. They do not uh, disagree with him. Mushnehem lo lemadua ela meilim. And both the right dalacha from the ram scheme used to cover the tabernacle. How? Rabbi Yezer Savar Keli Imaylim Yesh Bain Nitilat Veshama Of Kol Sheyesh Bain Nitilat Veshama So the same as a ram It's involved to take life taken and die So any type of animal that was life is taken and die The Rabbanan Savri and the sages hold Keli Imaylim Deferim Berabim Akol Depare Berabim The same as a ram Just as the ram procreates so too one is liable kill, killing any creature that procreates. Amar le Rabbeyei vechinayim para verava. So Rabbeyei said, lice is not procreate. But Amar Mar, we learn in Tractate of Avodas Zarah, Chapter Three, Yosheva Kadosh Baruch Hu vezan mikarne ramim al bitzechinim that the Almighty, um, in our language, sit and sustain everything from horns of wild oxen to the eggs of lice. So. Um, what, what it means that even the smallest lies reproduce by lying eggs. Minahu the mikra beitzekinim. From where uh, there is a species of insect that it's called lice eggs, which means that lice themselves do not actually lay leg, they lay eggs. Vatane atfuyeu beitzekinim. We say that a type of insect. And lice eggs, minau de mikre beitzekinim, from where we learn that this apply to a, a small lice eggs, vare parosh, we see that if one trap a, a, a um, parosh can be a flea, but here they say that um, based on the Tosfot in, the, in page 12a, they said that it's like a black fly that that jumping from one place to another in those old smartutim, old um, 
unused trash pieces that that's that's applied to to parosh. But anyway, the pare verave that it procreated, the tani atzad parosh b'shabad. If someone captured this type of parosh, Rabbi Yehuda mechayev Rabbi Yehuda poter. Rabbi Yehuda make it liable. Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Yehuda exam. Amar Rav Ashi tzeida ahariga karamit. So Rav Ashi said. Are you raising a contradiction between trapping and with killing? Ad kan lo pligi Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Yehoshua ela only machloket between Rabbi Yehuda and Yehoshua in regards to capturing or trapping the marasavar davar shen beminon itzod chayav. So the one who hold that one um, who liable even uh, trapping a species that is not typically a trap. Umar, which is Rabbi Yoshua, hold that patu uh, that he is exempt. Aval in yana riga, even Rabbi Yoshua mode. However, with regards to killing, even Rabbi Yoshua agreed that one is liable. We learn also in the Mishnah at Sadam le tzorech hayav shelo le tzorech patu. If someone capture for a certain purpose, they capture this creeping animal. For purpose need is liable. Mantana, who is the one who divided, uh, who differentiate between capturing them for a specific need or not? Amar Avud, Amar Av, Rabbi Shimon, Amar. That's a famous statement. You remember we said it many times. Melacha she ends richa legufa patur aleya. That um, uh, one who is doing a prohibited, prohibited labor, not for its own sake, is. Exempt. So we said, for example, if someone needs it uh, for the purpose of medicine, uh, he takes these creeping animals um, and he uses it to uh, that part of body of that animal for the purpose of medicine. So, but um, if he, he captured this creeping animal not because he needs to use it. He only in order to make sure that that animal will not cause any harm to him, like pre- precautiousness, then uh, he is exempt. But if, but according to Rabbi Yuda that said that melacha shenat zechal gufa, that if you do some type of work, even for not for its own sake, he is liable. So he is liable regardless. Ika demat leaha. So there is some to the statement of Rav to this. Hamefis Musa, who said in Gemara and Eduyot, page two, one who drains an abs- abscess, which means that uh, in a boil containing um, pus, so uh, it's a, it's a field that is like those wounds that im la asot la pe, if he intend to create an opening for it, chayav. Why? Because what we said, he make a, an entrance, and it's called bone. It's like a some type of building. We said it earlier. Im lo tzimi mena lecha. If he does that to remove pas from it, so patur is exempt. Mantana amar avud amar av rabbi shimoni. Again, the amar melachas natzach al gufa patur ala. If he does some type of work that it's not for its own purpose, he is exempt. Amar shmuel. Shmuel said, here is the, uh, uh, again, uh, something very um, applicable. Imagine that you are living, like many people in this community, living in a waterfront, or you go on a cruise, and you stop in a cruise, and it's on Shabbat, and the boat is stand there, right? Or you are on the cruise, right? Hasholet dag minayam. If one removes a fish from the sea, so one removes the fish from the sea, kevan sheyavash bo kasela chayav. So when the area of the skin of the fish was dried up on the side of the cellar, it's like a um, a stone side. So um, or they said there's another option that it's a coin that used in those days that it's called cella. That's a relatively small side. Chayav, he is liable because it's he take away the life. So now why? Because yes, the fish is still alive, but guess what? It was a long, longest period of time enough 
that the fish, even you return the fish back to the water, he is eventually, or very, uh, in a relatively short time, he is going to die. So, um, so the Rabbi Nuchanan will explain, and, um, um, and there is a Sfat Emet of a long uh, discussion, what exactly the measurement of dryness that create that uh, in, in a small fish that considering killing the fish how long you need to pull him out of the water how long the breath taking away a man of life in the water um, considering killing the fish but the key point is that the moment that he passed that border even by second and even you return the fish back to the water you already killed him Amar Abiyosi Baravin you have to, to uh, make sure that what we are talking about is between ears and, and fins. So, so why? Because that location, those who are familiar with fish, like David, so you know that um, what happened is that in that area between the fins, it's a highest chance that the fish will die. So someone who pull out the fish from the water it's like killing it. Um, that even the other spot in the body of the fish um, uh, dry up, nothing better happen, he still can live. And the one who put him in a, a, out of the water is not liable, but if it's between the, uh, the, um, the fins, definitely he said it doesn't mean that it's the, the flesh is dry to the extent that it's a mucus has formed. He said that um, the minutes that one touch that area will stick uh, to his fingers, and basically um, it's the same as you killing it. Natilat neshama. Amar bar baram duri amar shmuel oshit yado lemei beema v'lizdeot ubar beema chayav. So if someone um, a, like the, some midrashim said about Pharaoh, that what he told the midwives, one of the midrash said that he asked them while they have the delivery process so they sometimes need to pull the hands so while they're doing that they can kill the baby so some midrash said that that's the way he instructed them to kill the baby boys but here the point is that the person put um, his hand into an innard of an animal on Shabbat and he touched a fetus that was in its womb so um, he is liable because he is detached it's one of the type of work in Shabbat, and soon you see why. My Tama, what they, they, um, they, now it's important to know, the Meiri said, that it's not speaking about that fetus that it's dead, because if, the, if he caused death to that fetus, so for sure it means that he take away his life. We're not speaking of, um, um, uh, speaking about just detaching it, that it's type of work. That's one interpretation. There is another interpretation said that um, that the, the the fetus die, but it, the the liability is not because taking away of life, because as long as it's not a living creature, it's not considering you taking away its life. So therefore, we need to clarify what exactly the reason for the liability. Amarava Barahamdue Asbarali. He asked Barahamdue to explain. Rav Sheshet said that one who detach hopes on Shabbat from the shrubs and throne which they are growing is liable for what? For uprooting a, 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 an object from its place of growth. So here too it's the a derivative um, a tolada of Melechet Kotzer, the one of uprooting his subject, that was Ramban said, and 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 in the animals it's called Gozez, that was the Ram, uh, the uh, uh, Tosfot said in Avodah Zarah 26. Now um, Sa- R- Ramban and Rashba ask here, the truth is that someone who uprooted something from its growth. It's um, it's uh, only apply if it's a uh, something that grow on the ground, kotzer, that you uprooted something from the ground. 
So here, when he pull out his hand, pull the hand on that body of that animal, so how do you call it kotzer? So there is a, um, it's a long explanation what exactly and how you compare them, but the, the best is, soon you're going to see it, the Rambam Ilchot Shabbat chapter 11, he explained it, but Amar Abaye, Haiman de Talash, Abaye said, one who detached Petra, Meuna de Chatzba, a mushroom, Petra, we are uh, 108, just few lines. Petra meuna de chatzba, mechayel mishum oker davar mi gidulo. So a mushroom from a handle of a pitcher on Shabbat is liable because it's basically uprooting the subject from its place of growth. So what we learn, Mati bravoshaya tolesh meatzitz nakuv chayav, shenakuv patu, we just learned several pages ago that one who's taking he detach a plant on Shabbat from a perforated flower pot, so it's liable. But uh, we always say that the, that bottom of that part, it's the crucial part. Because if it's not attached to the world ground, it's different. So he said, Hatam Over there, when someone did it, on that part, um, it's not the natural habitat, it's not the natural place that that um, um, atzits, that a uh, uh, flower pot um, uh, grows, but here when someone take the keshot he, he uh, um, pull out those part, um, the, um, the um, hopes from the shrubs and throne that are growing, so that's different, that's the place that they are growth and therefore, so uh, the plan is considered connected to the ground, and he is liable. Ramba Milcho Shabbat chapter 10. If a bird flew underneath of flaps of one's clothing on Shabbat, he is permitted to guard it until after Shabbat. That's what Rabbi Abba said. Yashava Rishon al Petach, Patu Umutar. If a deer enter a building, and the person sat in the doorway, completely blocking the entrance. Another person may come and sit next to him if the first person leaves. The second individual there, the first person is liable, while the second one is exempt from all liability and is permitted to stay. Then we learn a call to a the Shabbat, all exempt ruling in Alachot of Shabbat. The term exempt used in the context of Shabbat means that the Torah does not obligate one to bring a sin offering, nor does one to incur exclusion for performing this act. Nevertheless, the sages prohibited this act. On the contrary, there are several exceptions to this rule, where the word exempt means that one is not merely exempt, but is but the performance of the action in fact is in fact permitted. So here is an example. Hamifis Musa Shabbat. One is permitted to puncture a boil containing pass on Shabbat if the intention is to drain the fluid from it, even if the boil also contains blood. This is allowed on condition that one does not apply pressure on the wound, thereby extracting blood from it. That's the Shulchan Aruch Chaim 328. How about snake on Shabbat? One who traps a snake on Shabbat in order to use it for some medi medicine purposes is liable. However, it's permitted to trap a snake to prevent him from biting. So biting is a different story because you need it for um, um, the, the purpose of this is a guard, a safeguard. Now, uh, trapping creeping animals. We talk a lot about uh, uh, trapping. One is liable for trapping or uh, wounding any of the eight creeping animals mentioned in the Torah. One who wounds it or trap other creeping animal for no particular need is exempt, although doing so is prohibited. However, if one, one is liable for trapping this animal for particular need, so the Rambam said that uh, one is liable even for trapping one of the, this animal for no particular need. So you see here a little different view between the Rambam and others. How about Chayav of Shibir Shuto? On Shabbat, an individual, the Mishnah Bura said, may trap 
domesticated animals by encouraging them to enter a small enclosure and locking them there. However, it is prohibited to trap these creatures with one's hand. Other authorities, the Rema, are more stringent and prohibited trapping domesticated animals, even Lechatchila, uh, also Agadot Arif. This opinion is shared by many, many later authorities, and that's the Rambam Milchot Shabbat chapter 10 and Shulchan Aruch um, uh, 3.16. Hachovel Bashratzin. So one wounds equipping animals. Um, uh, one who inflicts a wound upon one of the eight creeping animals listed in the Torah on Shabbat is liable if the act causes some type of harm or bruise beneath the skin. This ruling is in, according to the opinion of Rabbi Yochan ben Nuri, as the Gemara concludes that the Rabbi agree with him with regard to low Shabbat. One is liable for um, um, uh, wounding other creatures only if the wound causes them to bleed. So, Shulchan Oruch Orachayim 3.16 said it. Shar Shkatsim Umrat Umasim Defarim Berabim The sages all agree that one who kills a vermin and crawling things on Shabbat is liable if there are of the species that procreates. Hatzad Shratzim, one who traps creeping animal on Shabbat is liable only if there are type of animal that are generally trapped. However, one is not liable for trapping um, fleas and other uh, similar creatures which are not generally trapped. However, it is prohibited to do so by rabbinic decree. One who kills creatures, even of this later type, is liable. And that's Shulchan Ochor 3.16. Last halacha, hasholei dag Min hayam. If someone remove a fish from the sea, so there are two things that um, um, we try to compare. One is uh, one who removes a fish from the sea on Shabbat and leaves it out the, of the water is liable for what the Rambam said in Chol Shabbat chapter 11 for what for slaughtering. If an area of the skin the size of the cellar dry that coin, it's up between the fins of the fish. So now we try to say the same apply to Hoshit Yadolim Erimav the Delu Bar Shememea. One who inserts his hand into the animal's inord on Shabbat and detach a fetus from its womb is liable from, uh, for slaughtering and the Magid Mishne on the Rambam in Chod Shabbat, chapter 11, have a lot of explanations um, in a sense of what exactly involved here? If that means that he kill really the fetus or pull it out and just uprooted it.